from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. How y'all doing, fam? Everybody pull on up and tap on in. Let's see some of those fists in the air. Everybody sit, throw them fists in the air. What's going on with y'all, family? You guys good? Retweet. We got 100 people in. It's going to be a couple of hundred in in a minute. Shout out to the family. Much respect to you guys. Just wanted to tap in with the family. And again, I want to thank people for their contributions to the Kickstarter for the new movie, Microphone Check. You guys have been phenomenal so far. I really, really appreciate everybody who's been contributing and becoming a part of the movie project on Kickstarter right now. We are at, let me take a look at it real quick. We're at, um, hold on one second. Right now, as of now, we are, let me see. Come on, what happened, what happened? <clears throat> Excuse me. What the hell happened? I just saw it, then I don't see it no more. But there it is. So we're at 23K, all right? We're at 23K right now, which is good. In less than 24 hours, 23K. That's very, very good. All right, let's keep that momentum going. Y'all go to microphonecheck.com. And it'll link you to the Kickstarter page. <clears throat> and we need everybody involved. This is a very important documentary project as far as our culture. And we already knew people would be throwing hissy fits. And they're already throwing hissy fits. You know, they didn't make response videos already. I posted a clip of old doctor, the, the ringleader of the 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 colonizers, Derek Cologne, he made a video explaining and babbling and whining his blood pressure's up. And these people, a lot of stuff y'all don't see, they've been on the phones with each other in the back channels. They've been on the phone calling. These folks are panicking. I'm, I'm going to go deeper on my Sunday show, but yeah, some funny style stuff going on behind the scenes because these folks are really panicking. Um, they're copping, please. They're all in the comments talking about, um, and, and for those who don't know what I'm talking about, I posted a trailer for our new film called Microphone Check. And it's the film that really talks about the true origin of hip hop, the foundational black American origin of hip hop. And basically it's just a film telling the truth. That's all it is. It's just the film telling the damn truth. And we're bringing all the receipts to tell the truth. And we put up a trailer that was about, two minutes and 40 seconds and those two minutes and 40 seconds got these people pulling their hair out of their scalp and there's a lot of boy <laughs> the the latino cats the, the latino colonizer gatekeepers we didn't even go in on them on the, in the trailer we just kind of tapped them lightweight we didn't even go in on them in the trailer we just through a little lightweight sprinkles here and there, and they caught it. And they, it, those little sprinkles we hit them with is killing them. We just hit them with sprinkles, and they're having a get a damn fit right now. We didn't even go in on them on the trailer. If you look at the trailer, you know we we threw a little hints in there because you know that we're saving the best for last. You got to see the movie, <laughs> and the little sprinkles we hit them with, boy, they acting a damn fool. So, God, I would suggest, look, if you guys are one of those folks, if you're real sensitive, you don't see this movie. This is going to tear your little spirit up. Just don't see it. 
I'm telling y'all, don't this if that trailer got you bent out of shape, don't go see the movie. I don't want to be liable for your stroke. You're gonna have a stroke watching this shit because we go all the way in. That was nothing in the trailer. That was nothing. Now we 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 mentioned Jamaican and Caribbean culture, and it wasn't even disrespectful. We, you know, um, our, our brother Busy B said truthfully, "Hey, we weren't we weren't doing no Jamaican toasting, which is the truth." And then our sister Debbie D, who's a legend in hip hop, she was like, "Yeah, we didn't get none of this from Jamaican culture." Now, some of the tether class, you know, they having fits, but nigga, it, it, this movie is going to attack us. Is this movie going to attack Jamaica? Shut up. Shut up. When somebody say, hey, you didn't do what you said you did, that's an attack. They run around talking about this movie is attacking them. Nobody's attacking anybody. But you, you, we're not going to sit here and let you lie. You just can't lie forever. But we're getting a lot of... And, 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 and to be fair, some of our Jamaican brothers and Caribbean brothers, they're giving props. They're like, hey, man, you know, I'm Caribbean, but yeah, I popped my collar, man. This is good. I'm, I can't wait to see it. So I'm, I'm being very fair. I'm not getting in on all the Jamaican brothers. There's some Jamaican cats who saw the trailer. They're like, hey, man, both my parents are Jamaican. I'm, I, I live in New York, and I'm feeling it. I love it, man. I, I want to see. I'm interested to see what it's going to say. I'm feeling it. But the tethers, boy, the tethers, the, the, the hairlines are falling farther back right what is this sheet we we're all black at the end of the day nigga don't don't come around with that shit don't start that we all black at the end of the don't start that i really don't want to hear that we don't do that because y'all weren't doing that when buster and those guys were talking all types of crazy when fat joe's running right here talking crazy y'all ain't saying none of that when everybody's sitting here talking about what them we didn't got from Jamaicans and y'all ain't saying we all black, you know, y'all sat there and let that lie go on. You see, y'all set that y'all set up and let them lies just go on and circulate. Y'all didn't say nothing. Now that we getting some straightening, y'all y'all got two minutes of straightening. No, the, no, nigga, nigga, the same boat that dropped you off uh, that whole <laughs> the same boat bullshit. <laughs> We're all the same nigga. Okay. Okay, don't, don't. And and here's another thing, too. Now that we're getting some straightening, now people want to play dumb because we're talking about the, the, the real founding fathers and the, the people who really created hip-hop for real and where the elements came from and the foundation of Black American culture it came from. And it wasn't Jamaica, which is just the fact. And then you got a lot of people in the comment sections who who said that? No, no one said that. Who said it came from Jamaica? Oh, they playing that game. Now everybody want to get amnesia. Like they ain't been saying that. Who said that? Who said that? I don't know anyone who said that. Yeah, y'all yeah, got amnesia all of a sudden. All right. But yeah, y'all know what it is. Y'all y'all been going with these narratives for a long time. And yeah, we coming through with the truth. And the truth is good. And, and you know, what's important, um, these founding fathers, these pioneers, man, they're, they're such phenomenal people and they've been overlooked many times. Their stories have been kind of swept under the rug or minimized. And the dominant society, they've been just waiting on them to die off so that when they die off, they can really go in with the lies. You understand? So when these brothers and sisters die off, they can just double down with the damn lies. You dig? And um, we're not having it. Yeah, we're we're just not having it. We're getting these brothers and sisters while they're still here, which is good. Because it's very important because, man, a lot of a man, a lot of our pioneers, a lot of our elders, you know, you got to really get some good game from them and let them speak, you know, truth to power and give them their flowers when they're here. That's why. You know, with the Hidden Colors series, you got to understand a lot of people who was in the Hidden Colors series that we did, they're not here no more. And I'm, I'm very happy and proud to have gotten them to speak their truth and give them their global flowers while they're here. Our sister, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, um, phenomenal person in the Hidden Colors series. Remember, Dick Gregory was in Hidden Colors. He was in Hidden Colors too. Um... Um, Delbert Blair was in um, 
either, I think of three or four. Um, Dr. Pat, Sister Patricia Newton, she was in four, I think. She transitioned. Um, Laila Africa, he was in a few of them. And he transitioned. So um, uh, it's, it's good to get these brothers and sisters and give them their flowers while they're here. And I'm glad to have been able to get almost all of the real pioneers who were there from the very, very beginning of um, the formation of hip hop culture and um, let them do their thing. And um, some people are asking about um, Herc, Bam and Flash. And even Derek Colon made a video. How come we didn't get Flash? How come you didn't get Herc? And uh, we all know that nobody's really touching Bam right now. But, um, and I, I've explained Herc. Herc don't really do interviews like that. And, you know, I've reached out to Herc's people. Herc don't do interviews like that. And I spoke with Flash. You know, I actually did speak with Grandmaster Flash. And Flash was down, but there was a scheduling thing. We would have had to wait until this, like now, to October because, you know, Flash is a highly in-demand DJ and Flash does this thing. And I got a lot of respect for Flash. Flash is the guy. But, yeah, Flash was down and I spoke with him on the phone. But just the scheduling <clears throat> because, yeah, we're, we're ready to go. You know, we've been filming and people are very excited about the film. So, you know, I was going to get Flash. I was going to get Curtis Blow as well. But just the scheduling thing. But, you know, we got who we need. We got a lot of people in the film and. The film is already long as hell. We got to cut it down a lot because it's already very long. But um, but it's a phenomenal piece, man. It's going to be a phenomenal piece. And the, the people, they do, they're going to be talking about this one for a long time because they know this film is going to really be the quintessential hip hop documentary. This is going to be the go to film. All right, because there's, you know, they got hip hop documentaries out here, but it's a lot of them are full of fluff. A lot of these documentaries, they'll tell half truths and then they'll fluff it up with some BS and then they'll put a modern artist that's out at the time, put a bunch of them in there. So as time goes on, the relevance of those documentaries kind of fade. You know what I'm saying? When you do like that, a lot of them, in order for them to sell it to the current public, you know, they'll put some rappers who are hot in it. So, you know, you, you don't want to go back and watch a film like that. Like, for if there's a documentary, you know, from 20 years ago about hip hop, do it again. I don't want to go watch a documentary film with Lil Bow Wow and the Lunatics in it. You know, people who ain't really popping now. And th that's no disrespect to Lil Bow Wow and the Lunatics, by the way. I'm just giving an example of, you know, people. You know, who were relevant or more relevant, who had hot records at a certain time. Where In this documentary, we've, we're focusing specifically on the historic aspect of it. A lot of people were asking, how come we didn't get um, kind of some newer rappers, some recent rappers? No, we're focusing on what went down in the 70s and before. That's our basic focal point, because nobody really focuses on that like they should. See, we, we, that's why the stories are all up in the air. And then you got all Fat Joe and all these people running around talking about they were there. No, they weren't there. Let's, let's, we we got to get this shit straight. These people were not there because they were kids at the time. A lot of these folks running around, I was, I'm from the Bronx and I was right there. No, you weren't. You were somewhere in diapers with a shit stain because you were about four years old when cats was out there at them parties, at them jams. You were not out there. And people want to get props or try to lay some kind of historical um, claim or expertise just because they just happened to be in the Bronx as a kid when something else was going on that had nothing to do with them. Y'all had shit to do with them parties in the Bronx in the early and mid 70s because you weren't old enough. So nobody's going to pull that. You, It's the Bronx thing. You can't be you ain't from the Bronx. You can't. Be, yeah, no, 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 no. It's an FBA thing. And if you ain't FBA, sit your ass down because we have more of an authority than some cat in the Bronx who weren't really down or rocking around some of those foundation of black American brothers. We got more of an authoritative outlook on hip hop as foundation of black Americans. If you were living in Idaho or wherever, because it comes from our culture, all the roots of it come from our culture and we're going to prove it. 
in the film. You feel me? Well, let's get some people in here. We got a lot of folks in here. We're going to see what's on everybody's mind. What's up, William? Hello, man. How are you doing? I'm good, William. How are you? I wanted to um, tell you a couple of things first. I wanted to say that um, I support you and what you're doing um, by shedding a light on hip hop. And uh, well, I just wanted to get that out first by telling right. you that. Right. Okay. Thank and I wanted to say that, um, you know, I've been following you for a while and I've been seeing what you've been doing. But honestly, brother, I think you should tell the truth. About what? Well, you know, well, if you're going to make a, well, a film about hip hop and the history about hip hop and, you know, all the people I play, you should tell the world and your viewers and the people watching about the real people who made hip hop. And those are the Pakistanis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. Um <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. DJ Camel Meat and MC Hummus. Right, right. I forgot about them. So that's going to that's gonna be my new film. That's going to be my new film. Instead of microphone <laughs> check, is, instead of microphone check, is Baklava check. That's going to be the next movie. Right. No, brother, listen. The Pakistanis, the Puerto Ricans, the Jamaicans, the Spaniards, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Okay, yeah, we got it from you. We got Grandmaster Camel. All right, all right. Let me get some more people in here. All right. <laughs> and look, listen, while y'all bullshitting, wait a few years and you have some people talking like that for real. Why y'all bullshitting? Wait a few years and they'll be talking like that for real. They'll be talking like that for real. Hell, China Mac is already, you got people like China Mac talking about the Asian contribution, how they contributed to hip hop and all that stuff. Shit. Don't think it's, some, it, it sounds crazy now. Hell, um, 30 years ago, a cat running around talking about Latinos created hip hop would sound crazy. 30 in the 90s, they, they weren't saying that in the 90s. Family, I'm telling y'all, because in the 90s, you, you had a lot of the legends, a lot of you know people still around, and a lot of the legends were still active out here. So, you know, cats were very serious in, in, in the 90s. You couldn't say no stuff like that and walk the streets and be good. You couldn't say that. Now that you know, a lot of the older cats have kind of died off, some of the old street dudes have died off. Now the coast is clear. So cats are just saying anything right now. Yeah. Let's get uh let me see. Down by law. Down by law. Let's get down by law. Uh, what's that down by law? All right, while we're waiting on down by law, phone, let's get sister, sister something. What's up, sister? Is this me, sister Sean? Am I on? Yes, ma'am. How are you, sister okay, Sean? Okay, let me tell you. Oh, well, thank you. i uh, honored to be here. Uh, I usually always miss your spaces, but I'm going to get straight to the point. <laughs> all this. Yes, ma'am. Uh, all of it is a lie when it comes to hip hop. I have a very, very unique uh, experience where I grew up in my life halfway in LA and halfway in Washington. So I'm like East Coast, West Coast, right? Um, mm -hmm. All of it's bullshit. I was there in 87, all in the 80s. I graduated 87 Coolidge High School. I used to go up to New York every weekend just to party. And nothing, there was no there was no Puerto Ricans. There was no um, Hispanics or anything with hip hop. We were all about, it was like revolutionary rap. That's what we called it. It was revolutionary rap. Mm -hmm. So what that meant was mm -hmm. rap had a purpose. 
and we were revolutionaries. And we would go to New York and there was no Hispanics nowhere. I, and we already knew what went down in the Bronx and Yes, all right, let me land your complaint. Thank you, dear. Because the eighties, that's a little further up. But the seventies is really what we're focusing on in the film, by the way. But thank you. I had to land her plane. Um, down by law, you ready? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You saying uh uh-uh. uh? You saying uh uh-uh uh to a dude in there with you? What, is he trying to do something to you? What is he trying to do? Is this nigga being <laughs> sound like this nigga's being assaulted? What the hell? You got on the phone. Mm 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 mm. Not that whole. Mm-mm. Brother, are you okay? Somebody check on him. Um, sounds like he's in Andrew Gillum's hotel room. All right. And then and they're getting into some little activities. Brother, that was very moist and scary at the same time. All right. Hopefully he's going to be okay. Let me get Brother McCall in here. Brother McCall. Brother Mikal, all right. And um, by the way, everybody, go to microphonecheck.com. Brother Mikal, turn your speaker, your microphone on, please. If you can. Mr. of Code, how are you? I'm good, brother. How are you, sir? Beautiful, beautiful, living a dream and winning. Congratulations for another masterpiece. Yes, Woo. epic. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you epic, so much. Epic. Well, I just wanted to leave you with a little bit of uh, Paul Mooney logic. Puerto Ricans and Jamaicans saying they created hip hop is like the whites and the Arabs saying they built the pyramids. I land. Love you, great one. Man, thank you so much, brother. Man, man, man. Man. But man, it's it's just weird that every time we don't allow ourselves to be erased or lied on, this sense of of entitlement that so many people have, like we're just supposed to kick back, let them lie, and just spread all types of untruths, and we're not supposed to say anything family and if we say something it's divisive i I don't want to be with somebody yeah we're supposed to divide from lies we're supposed to be divided from lies there's nothing wrong with dividing ourselves from lies curtis hop on curtis turn your microphone on sir if you can all right, and while we're waiting on Curtis, let's get 215. So 215, hop in. What's going on, brother? How you doing? I'm good. Well, so you out there in Philly, bro? Yeah, I'm, well, yeah, I'm from Philly, but I'm out here in North Carolina now. I'm uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, brother. Oh, shout out to Raleigh. They still got all them pretty girls out there. They got some pretty women in Raleigh last time I went. Oh, yeah. You already know, man. You already know. They they stay out here, brother. They stay out here. But a uh, quick question, man. Um, I was watching a, a clip earlier, and it said 2.2 million immigrants have immigrated here in the last year, Hispanic immigrants to be specific. Uh, how do you feel about that in in uh, and Biden is, is now trying to put up the border wall again. How do you feel about that? And, and what are we going to do to combat this mass, you know, movement of immigration to protect foundational black Americans? Right. Yeah. And I've been speaking on that for the past couple of days, man. And, you know, it's just a problem. It's in, and they're dumping these folks right into black neighborhoods. So, you know, we got to really get codified and that's how you organize. People say get organized, but you get organized by codification and us saying, Hey man, we're not going to support these policies. They want us to sit here and use our voting power to support policies that don't benefit us because we're supposed to be on this minority coalition. And we're saying, no, we need something specifically for foundational black Americans. We need something for us. And you guys got all these resources you dumping off on these other people 
because what they're doing is using them to replace us. And that's a problem. We're saying no. Enough is enough. All right. Let's get C Sega. Sega. Sega, turn your microphone on, man. Uh, so will you do a documentary about the history of like techno and like other black genres that we created? Well, probably not techno because, you know, I, I know that we've created, you know, techno and uh, house music and all that. But, you know, that's not my you know foray. I'm, you know, I'm a hip hop head. I like hip hop and shout out to the Frankie Knuckles and all of those cats who um, did the house music and the dance music and all that. But is um, where are you from? Chicago, New York. Okay, all right. But yeah, I think there, I think there might be documentaries about that already, but I'm not sure. All right, let's get Jason. Uh, yes. Good afternoon. Good evening. What's up, um, Jason? How? Yeah. Good. Good. I, I'm so glad you're doing this documentary, man. Uh, I'm from the Bronx. I grew up in the Bronx. Um. I'm 53. I have a. I grew up with a cousin that's nine years older than me. So, during that time in the 70s, him being like almost really more of a brother than a cousin would have to take me with him places and stuff. So, he would yeah. take me to some of these uh, parties and stuff. Not the parties so much, but uh, like the block parties and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. Definitely, there was there was no Puerto Ricans doing it. There, you had a, a sprinkle here and there of, of Puerto Ricans that sort of rocked with us, but inventing stuff no definitely right. not and yeah, also this, go ahead go ahead bro also um his mother was married to a puerto rican man um and they actually lived in puerto rico but like just before i was born so they spoke fluent spanish and all of that and he would also take me with him sometimes around his family um and they lived in a projects where you know there's all these puerto ricans you hear all, nothing but salsa there was never any uh, hip hop or anything coming out of the houses or anything like that. Mm. So they didn't even they didn't really even listen to hip hop. Also, my father he married a Jamaican woman when I was about two, and when my youngest brother from their from from their marriage, when he turned about eight or so and he could fly, we used to spend summers every other summer we would spend in Jamaica. So as a teenager in the eighties in Jamaica, hanging out with uh, her nieces and nephews and stuff that were around my age, they never even heard of hip-hop. None mm. of them had been to America. We, any music they were listening to was that hardcore Jamaican music where you can't even understand what they're saying. Yeah. And, and knew nothing about hip-hop, didn't dress like hip-hop. There was no graffiti anywhere. We were there every other summer during the 80s. Man, so every it's not, you know, and it's just... And it's, this, the, yeah, and this is what I've, I've been hearing for everybody in the Bronx says the same thing. You know, the only people who say something different are new Puerto Ricans now. Those are the only people who say, who try to pretend that there's this big utopia kumbaya thing where everybody was doing things equally. But you talk to any black person in the Bronx in the 70s, they all say the same thing. Yeah, exactly. It, and it's not, you know, I had Puerto Ricans, like, you know, basically in my family. So, I mean, I was cool with them and everything. But, I mean, when we go around, you know, it was, it was here and there. Like, there was a, you know, it, it was an odd thing for Puerto Ricans to be hanging out with black people. You know, in a crowd of, of 50 people, there might be two Puerto Ricans there. Right, right, right. But thank you for the call, brother. And that's what we're saying. We're talking about this in the movie, man. Let's just, let's just keep it real. You know, let's stop with this fake utopia bullshit. Look, People were cool. People were cordial with each other. There were a lot of people. Some people were hostile with each other back then. But culturally, they weren't doing the same things we were doing. Hip-hop is a funk base genre with Southern roots. So the Puerto Ricans weren't, they just weren't getting down like that in large numbers. You, you had a couple of Puerto Ricans who would go to the jams, you know, they... they they were trying to be like the black folks and emulating the black people. You had a couple of them doing that, but culturally, no, that's something they just weren't doing. That's just the reality. And to be honest, notice they don't really, they can't really refute that because you're going to have to bring some proof or some receipts and nobody ever brings receipts to 
refute this. So what they do, they deflect by projecting a bunch of name calling. When we ask them, hey, why don't y'all bring some receipts? And I ain't talking about I'm white and I damn say so. Why don't y'all bring some receipts? If you got all of these Puerto Rican pioneers who was all this 50-50 bullshit, bring a receipt. You're divisive. You weren't there. You had to be there. No, no, no. Bring a receipt. Now you're deflecting. Well, you know, uh, it's all about everybody being together. No, no, no. Bring a receipt. Now talking and, and, and deflecting and doing everything except bringing some damn receipts. Because we got receipts. And we have no problem laying the receipts down. Curtis, are you ready to get on, man? All right, Curtis, you're just sitting there. All right, let's get some more people in here. Because we got a lot of people trying to get in. Let's get um uh let's get Kareem. Let's get brother Kareem in here. Let me get Curtis out of here. Kareem, hop on, man. Kareem, hop on. Yo, what up, Reed? Good to talk to you, brother. How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm sir? all right, man. I'm tapping in from Rochester, New York. And um Man, I got family down in the Bronx, man. And uh, back back in those days, Puerto Ricans didn't come to our jams. They were terrified. Yeah, they were terrified. Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's another thing. In the Bronx, the Bronx was real in the seventies, right? So you know, people weren't just walking around in people's neighborhoods like that. You, 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 you right, know, right, go ahead, right, go right. Ahead. And um, you know, this documentary is uh very important because I I hate to see them do hip hop the way they did rock and roll and jazz. You know what I mean? Right. So perfect timing. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you All so right, much. Buddy. But yeah, man. And we talk about that in the film. See, this is the truth is so much more interesting than these damn fables. These fables are corny and boring because they're not real and they're not basing anything. This whole thing about bunch of Caribbeans and Puerto Ricans got together and made hip hop and then we just don't exist. They they really just leave us all the way out. They leave foundational black Americans completely out. And we created it from top to damn bottom. And the way we created and what fueled the creation of it, it's an interesting story. How the black people came in to New York from the South. You have black people still in New York from the Harlem Renaissance. That's an interesting story. How black folks came up there after World War II, how black people started having black parties in Harlem, and then the Apollo was up there. There was a cultural mecca. Our history is rich. We didn't need no goddamn Caribbean and Puerto Man, dude. Our foundational black American lineage is rich, rich, rich with culture, vibrancy, um, musical influences. Man, we had things popping in New York as foundational black Americans. What would we need to get from some other culture? You understand? What would we need to get from them that we didn't have? Let's tell the truth. And we got to stop being afraid to tell the truth. Ain't nobody going to shame me into letting them lie because people have been in our comments for the past 24 hours. Tariq, you're supposed to bring people together. Why are you spreading hate? Us not letting you lie is hate. Stop. Just let it go. The truth will set you free. All right, let's see who else we got in here. Let's, let's get Sir Major in here. Sir Major, hop on, brother. Hey, brother Tariq, what's up? What's up, sir? How are I'm you? doing all right. So, Fat Joe, you talked about, um, you know, age or whatever. Fat Joe was born in, he was born in 1970, which means that right. he would have been three years old at the birth or creation around around this time. When, uh, Based on his, uh, his own logic, he would have been three years old. So there's no way in hell mm -hmm. that he was there. Uh, the other thing is that um, on yesterday, I made um, some some posts. I, I made um, I posted some videos of Fat Joe did an interview with NPR, and in the first clip, yeah, and I, I took these segments out. He actually 
did not name you. He was a coward enough to talk shit about you without naming your name because I think that that would have been a, a backfire on him. Uh, so he mentioned he, he referenced you, but he also talked shit about the black Twitter, saying that black Twitter was not real. Uh, this is all made up. He doesn't respect us. That sort of deal. Uh, and then also in the second clip, which is on my page, you'll see that he talked about him knowing that he was Puerto Rican or, or Latino, but he identified as black. He says that he grew up black because he lived in a black community. Uh, so that's his his way of trying to leech off of or be an association of blackness. Then he goes on to say that he talks about his oppression or the oppression that he went through because his father was arrested and pulled over for a traffic infraction. Although he had, despite having a clean license and uh, a criminal history, he was taken to jail for not speaking Spanish. So that's his um, relation to being oppressed and I guess being black. The last thing I wanted to say was that um, you talked about how, um, you know, uh, why is this happening now? Because the founding fathers uh, are, 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 you know, older now and, and many of them may not be alive now. What, what I would say to you is I think it's a lot more sinister, Tariq. What we have to look at is the corporate structure of this, because this is all being fueled and engineered by corporations. You got VH1, right. Viacom, you got, um, and you got these black publications like hip hop, uh, the Hip Hop Source or, or the Source Awards and all these folks. You got these black folks co-signing like um, Black Enterprise didn't speak out. Uh, these black publications that are truly supposed to be for black people aren't combating this, forcing you and people like you to have to kind of pick up the torch. What I would say is that this is yeah. a corporate structure, which means that there is money. So they're praying that these black, uh, uh, um, the engineers of hip hop die out. So that way they can go ahead and, and, and license and, and start corporate uh, profiting off of this. And so the last thing I'll say is this, the folks that are going to be in your documentary, I pray to God that they own their domains, that they go get the trademarks to their, you know, their names and their brand and try to protect themselves because if it would not be for this documentary uh, or this, the, this film, white America and all these corporations are going to have a field day uh, with profiting. So thank you so much. Yes, and thank you, brother. Yeah, man, uh, Sir Major made a good point, very good point, that this is fueled by the corporations, a lot of these lies. And even the, that, that clip of Fat Joe, he was talking about, yeah, you know, ain't nobody, you know, I'm out here in the streets and nobody's really um, challenging me on none of this stuff. Uh, no, you're not around, you know, people who were who were there. You're not around people who are real hip hop purists. I mean, the people you're around, what the sexy red, me, I'm come on, Drake. Yeah, so these people, and, and most of the people in the industry now are tethers. So yeah, but the thing is, Fat Joe said something. He was like, yeah. Hey, I'm hosting the BET Awards. You know, if I wasn't keeping it real, how can I be hosting the BET Awards? Well, that's that's the white corporate structure orchestrating that. That has nothing to do with the grassroots of hip hop culture. White people in the corporate sector made that decision. You understand? So we got to put everything in perspective. What's up, Ty? Ty Powell. Like Ty, turn the microphone on, brother. All right, Ty. Uh, while waiting on Ty, let's get King Deep. All right, King Deep. While waiting on Ty. All right, King Deep, you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm Ty or King Deep? Which one? Yeah, I've been following you for a long period of time, brother. I play from Alabama as well. Camden, Birmingham, Huntsville, the Kitchen. King D, brother, what kind of phone do you have, brother? What kind of phone is that? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello? My bad, my bad, brother. You can probably hear me better. Have my um, have my phone connected brother. to my speaker Bluetooth wise, so it probably be a little little jank. Yeah, oh. but um, uh, I've been following you for for years. This brother. Brother Alabama as well. Camden, Alabama, ahead. the Black Belt, uh, Huntsville, Birmingham, 
uh, Hunts, Huntsville, Birmingham, Decatur, and all that. You know what I'm saying? But I've been following you for a while, so I just want to spread love, man. You, I appreciate what you're doing for the culture, brother. Um, I, I had to bury my grandma. Yes, you know what I'm saying? About two months ago, we buried on that native land, man, that red dirt, that clay dirt down there in Camden, Alabama, which is Wilcox County. Wilcox County, oh, yeah. um, if you don't understand Wilcox County, one of the, the army generals, he was killed by the Creek Indians down there. You know what I'm saying? Me, I got I got acres of land down there. Um, the swamps, everything yeah. of that nature, it's real legit. Everything you're speaking about, you know what I'm saying? But I've been following you for for, for many for many years, brother. No and uh, I appreciate what you're doing. My man, appreciate. It. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, I'm here. It. All right, Ty, what's up, brother? Yeah, um, yeah, Fat Joe is from Trinity Ave, and he's not even full Puerto Rican. He's half Italian. His dad's Italian. His mom is a white Blanca Puerto Rican. I'm from Jersey, and FBA runs the yard throughout the United States, even in the north. When I grew up mm -hmm. in Jersey, I grew up like maybe a quarter of a mile from a slave plantation. The slave oh, yeah. plantation, it was from like the 1700s. But FBA runs the yard throughout the North and the South as far as yeah. black Americans, you know. And Fat Joe, yeah, he's not even full Puerto Rican. He's half Italian. His dad's Italian. His mom yeah. is Puerto Rican. So mm. and he was born. I was born in 77. He was born in like 70, 71, around that time. But the Puerto yeah. Ricans, they didn't fuck with the uh, Moreno. They used to call us Morenos. The, the yeah. Hispanics throughout the five boroughs, not even just the Bronx, just the five boroughs didn't fuck with the actual Morenos, the blacks, the us. You know, they didn't fuck with us. So yeah. all this hip hop was created by Hispanics. Nah, that's bullshit. Even from Real Jersey, because Jersey's right next to New York. I mean, you could, you, oh, could yeah. you could work in New York and live in Jersey. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. you know, and oh. Philly, and another thing, Philly, Philly's only 80 miles from New York. You can live in yeah. Philly and work in New York. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah. my dad's from Brooklyn. And yeah, but my, I was born in Philly. But, you know, I grew okay. up in Jersey right in the middle. And then I, oh, yeah. I got some money and I moved to Johns Creek, Alpharetta. So I got the fuck, up, got the fuck away from all that bullshit. But, yeah, yeah, no, the no, North, no. yeah, it's very, very close. I'll land my plan. Thank you, brother. All right. Shout out to Brother Ty. All right. Let's see. A lot of folks in here. And by the way, y'all hit up that um, microphonecheck.com. Microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get, um, let's get Sonny in here. Let's get Sonny. I'm right, waiting on Sonny to come through. What's up? What's up? Can you hear me? What's up, Sonny? What's going on? What's going on? Two things, and I'm gonna be quick. Uh, <laughs> I can only imagine. What's your response? What's this, what's the response you've been getting since the trailer dropped? Like, has it been good? Is it been bad? Is it what you expected it to be, or what was it? Like, what is it? Oh yeah, it's been a bit. People are absolutely loving it now. The some of the folks, you know, there's some butt hurt people, and I knew there was gonna be some butt hurts, but for the most part, people love the trailer. But yeah, there's a the backpedaling. There's a lot of people like, oh, why we gotta be divisive? Ain't we all black? And we I ain't trying to get none of that. So yeah, there's a lot of splaining already. <laughs> That's funny. And another thing too, uh, have you gotten any pushback as far as like, did you hear what kind of special ed said about like NWA artists and you being the West Coast dude? Have you gotten any like pushback as far as you being like on this hip hop documentary stuff, being the LA cat dealing with New York cats? Like, has that been the issue? Oh no, no, not at all. Thank you. Let me let me learn that. But um, you know, there's some people who try to kind of say, "Well, you in the L.A. How are you going?" You can't say that because I'm a historian. I am a historian, and I am a foundational Black American. Hip hop and the roots is the foundational Black American culture. So yeah, I can speak on it. And plus, I gathered all of the pioneers who were actually there, and I gave them a platform to speak for themselves. You see, so that's how that works. So let's get um, master of the flying guillotine. Hi, Tariq, man. Um, I'm from Roxbury, Mass. I'm glad you um let letting me speak. I saw your 
Your trailer, dude, that shit is so powerful, man. So for FBA, yeah, like, thank you. So much. Yeah, man, I was born in '87, right? So I've been to freaking Puerto Rican parties, Jamaican parties. Like, you don't hear one hip hop song at those parties. So if they create a hip hop, how come you don't hear them at the like none of the music at the parties, yo? I went to the West End. Real that, talk. You don't hear no type of hip hop at all, dog. I think it's very disingenuous that they're trying to write us out of our own culture, yo. That's sad, dude. Like, Real talk. Like, I don't, like, th this kind of makes me not even want to support Fat Joe or Busta Rhymes. No lie, dog. But I'm I'm so glad you made mm. this documentary, man. I'm so hyped for it. Um, I saw one comment under your trailer, and dude's like, oh, how's a West Coast dude trying to speak on um, how hip-hop was made? You're not from New York. I'm like, dude, Tariq's a straight-up historian, man, telling nothing but the truth, yo. And he got the, the pioneers telling the story. You're not the one telling the story. And they're like, dude. We ain't hearing up here about no damn toasting. Y'all freaking Puerto Ricans run out here b-boying first. Like y'all can't even groove to the to the the um the music that we was making. Y'all was calling this jungle jungle what was it jungle music? And th yeah. they freaking like I'm looking at them sideways, dude. Like they're on some real white supremacist supremacist shit now. Like you can see all the yeah. hostility that they're coming at us towards. Like when it comes to be us being black. Like, I'm looking at them real funny yeah. style now. All these Latinos, man. Like, they're in these white supremacist groups, and I'm just not feeling it. But uh, more more power to you, man. I can't wait till that freaking, that hip-hop documentary comes out, man. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, brother. But yeah, man, well, well, that's one thing that that I really don't like, the hostility that's coming from these folks. Like, if we don't sit here and let them lie, then they're going to act hostile towards us. And like, oh, come on now. And then they're going to try to shame us. and No, 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 no. We're not going for that. We're not playing that game. Man, we are in here heavy. And I hope everybody got their root work deodorant because the weather is real funny. It's warm one minute, cold one minute, hot the next. So you guys are going to need that root work deodorant so y'all are not running around here musty for October. Halloween is coming up. And also, this is Hoodoo Heritage Month. Speaking of... um. FBA culture, hoodoo, which is part of the foundation of black American culture, conjure and root work. This is the month where we celebrate hoodoo culture of healing and, and giving praise to our ancestors and using their ancestral strength for healing. Um, but go to rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen, rootworkstyle.com. Speaking of our ancestry, you know, Aren't they having the um this reparations rally, not rally, but a conference in Georgia tomorrow? I want to know what that's going to be about. They're having a reparations conference in Georgia, and it's a whole bunch of Democratic shills that's going to be there. In Cobra, um, NARC, it's a lot of these Democratic shills that's going to be there talking about so-called reparations. I want to see how that's going to go down because that seems like it's going to be a rock the vote campaign disguised as a reparations campaign or reparations um, conference. And they got um, Strappy is going to be there. And Strappy, so I saw somebody sent a clip where she's talking shit about everybody. She's taking shots at everybody. And she threw my name in the mix. But Strappy, this woman is so mad at me. Strappy is so mad at me. Her and her ADOS organization. Poor Strappy. Strappy is so upset because I took all the little clout from her. I give it and I take it away. Strappy is so upset because she hates to face the fact that I'm the only thing. The only reason she got any shine was because of me. I was the, I'm the person who gave her what little piece of shine she had and then I took it away and then she went back to obscurity and you know she had that that second ADOS rally the ADOS conference and like what eight people showed up poor thing and she was all there in her little Burlington's chopper suit by herself that crushed her soul that crushed her soul. And then I got all of these rallies and conferences that's just popping all over the place. And her little conference was a basically a an AA meeting. They could have got 
some chairs and sat in a circle to talk about their feelings. So that burns her ass that um, I took the shine away from her and she's just sitting there um, very angry, very angry because, you know, she wanted to be the man. And you know how some of them get when a real man is around, she goes back to being an ugly chick. And that's what she feels like. She feels like the ugly girl around me. She's not the man when I'm around. When, when a real alpha male is in the room. Oh, she hates that. Oh, she hates that. So, you know, at least she started to doll up a little bit. When I got through dumping her back to the curb, she started putting on a little Fenty, a little rouge. Some, she got the Rihanna makeup line and tried to doll it up as much as she could <laughs> so she could look less haggard. So God bless her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she's going to be all right. Next thing you know, she's going to get a BBL. A stud with a BBL and a strap on. That's going to be insane to watch. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, man, let's see who else we got. Because <laughs> we got a lot of people in here this evening. Where are the ladies at? Let me talk to some of the women in here. Well, we got a reparation. We got some reparations. Oh no, no. Look like I saw some reparations now thing, you know. All right, what's up, brother? Somebody, brother, sister, whoever you are, hop in. Mm -hmm. Brother. Man, what's going on with your phone? The amazing world of gumball is one of the best shows in history. You agree? Man, or disagree? Comment down below. So the hell is wrong with your phone, brother? You're going to just call up and have the TV going on in the background. And you sound like you got an old TV. Nigga, what kind of TV is that? This thing got a black and white Magnavox TV. I haven't heard a TV that old sounding since my grandma's house. Nigga sitting in his auntie house with an old TV. TV so old, even old shows on there. The nigga watching Andy Griffin. All right. Let's get on um, Heat to the Street. Heat to the Streets. Hop on Heat to the Streets. Heat to the Streets. Where you at? All right. Come on, man. Y'all got to hop on here. Y'all messing the flow up. What's up, Nikki the God? I see you down there, beloved. Afro Elite, I see you. Black Voltron, I see you. 